There's been a lot of new releases in the 3D printing industry as of late, but there's one printer that seems to be dividing opinions more than any other, the Prusa Core 1. In a pre-Bamboo world two or three years ago, this would have been an easy buy. It looks great, boasts some impressive specs, and is backed by Prusa's industry-leading customer service. But this isn't the same industry it was back then. Things have changed, drastically. So in today's landscape, is this a serious contender worthy of your hard-earned dollars, or is it just more noise in an already congested market? Is it a real competitor to the likes of Bamboo Lab, or a last-ditch effort to remain relevant? The internet is divided. Some say it's Prusa's comeback, and others say it's too little too late. So let's talk about it. I have some points to share that are worth considering, and I'm genuinely curious to read your comments and hear what you have to say. Now, before you write me off as a bamboo shill or anti-Prusa, let me provide you with a few pieces of evidence to the contrary. May I present? Exhibit A. Exhibit B. And Exhibit C. Yes, that is a gold Prusa Mark III signed by Joseph himself. Was it a good investment? Probably not. It kind of clashes with the orange. But while these have already depreciated considerably, this might actually retain its value. At least, that's what I'm going to tell myself. Highest bid takes it. No lowballs. I know what I have. But if we zoom out, you can see that as much as I've been on the Prusa bandwagon in the past, I'm equally as invested in bamboo. Okay, maybe not equally. You can get five of these for the price of one of these. But I'm at the point in my business where I'm considering expanding, buying more printers. So the question is, which of these makes sense to buy? Prusa or bamboo? For some, I think the answer will be obvious. There's a good contingent of people that are firmly on Team Prusa or Team Bamboo, and you won't be able to convince them otherwise. But for others, they don't have the same deep-rooted sense of brand loyalty. They just want to get the most bang for their buck, something that performs well and lasts a long time. The issue of longevity is a big reason why folks continue to recommend Prusa printers. In the modern age, many, if not most, tech products are seen as expendable to be disposed of in short order when they're inevitably superseded by the next generation, or when the batteries run out. Components are often inaccessible and not user serviceable, with replacements being cost prohibitive and repairs being time prohibitive. Such is the case with bamboo printers. I'm a big fan of the X1 Carbon. They're feature rich, convenient to use, and generally produce great results. But after just a thousand hours of printing, two out of these four printers are currently out of commission. This one has an issue with the heated bed, and this one is giving me an error related to the force sensors that are used for nozzle probing. So these expensive machines are currently paperweights. I could contact support to see what they could do for me, but I have a feeling that it's going to be more work than it's worth to try to repair them. On the other hand, these Prusa Mark III's are all perfectly functional. Even these two that we affectionately call nuts and bolts. These were thrown in for free to use for parts when we bought a few of these second hand. After a little bit of maintenance, we had them back up and run. But while these are all functional, they rarely get used. They're just too slow, and lack the quality of life features we've become accustomed to in the bamboo ecosystem. This entire rack went from being cutting edge tech to nearly obsolete in just a few short years. These boxes you see here are pallet threes from Mosaic Manufacturing. They're filament multiplexers that splice together different colors of filament and feed them to the tool head allowing you to achieve multicolor prints on an ordinary printer. At one time, this was the only turnkey solution for multicolor printing. When they worked, they were okay, but they never really lived up to expectations, with frequent issues negating from the experience. Then Bamboo burst onto the scene with their simple and effective AMS units. This immediately made multicolor printing infinitely more accessible. The Palette 3 originally retailed for a thousand US dollars. You can now get an entire printer, the Bamboo A1, with an AMS light for roughly half that, and it works way better. Unsurprisingly, Bamboo quickly gobbled up Mosaic's market share, leading to the discontinuation of the Palette 3 not long after it was initially released. So to call Bamboo's presence in the market disruptive would be an understatement. They've rewritten this script, forcing all other manufacturers to catch up or die trying. And it's clear that Prusa is feeling the pressure. The launch video for the Core 1 is riddled with backhanded comments and not so subtle comparisons to bamboo. I'll play a few of them here so you can see what I mean. Nothing is glued together or impossible to replace. It's much safer than glass, 
because it's nearly indestructible. Why most manufacturers recommend printing these filaments with the enclosure doors open with the Core 1, this is not an issue. You don't have to limit your projects with a small selection of special high-speed filaments. With this add-on you can create beautiful, colorful objects and you won't have to throw half of your filaments away or constantly clean the surroundings of your printer. We take security seriously and we will never force you to connect the printer to the network. So clearly Prusa placed emphasis on what in their mind makes the Core 1 superior to Bamboo's offerings. On the point of repairability, you can't argue that. They've taken an entirely different approach to engineering. One that makes all parts relatively accessible and user serviceable. Combine that with the upgrade path between generations and it's clear that the longevity of their printers is far superior to Bamboo. It's really quite impressive that they've provided an option to update the bed slinging Mark IVs to a Core 1. Although, considering the combined cost of the Mark IVs and the upgrade kit, you'd be much better off just buying a Core 1. At $1199 for an assembled Core 1, cost is on par with the Bamboo X1C when it's not on sale. Accounting for seasonal discounts, you can get the Bamboo X1C with AMS for the cost of a Core 1. Prusa's multi-material unit, the MMU3, is available as an optional add-on for an additional $359, bringing the total package price to $1,558. Incorporating shipping costs, the final tally is approximately $1,700 for the Core 1 with MMU3, and $1,250 for the X1C combo. That's a $450 premium for Prusa's offering, and it doesn't include a camera by default. That'll cost you an extra $40. In the absence of bamboo in the marketplace, I'm sure Prusa would have loved to charge even more for this machine. At this price point, it devalues their own Mark IVs, making it a hard sell. Without the likes of the X1C, they easily could have charged $1,500 for the Core 1 and had a high volume of sales, keeping the Mark IVs in their lineup as a more affordable option. With the pressure from Bamboo, that put a cap on how much they could reasonably charge. But that's not the only way Prusa has changed in response to market pressures. With the launch of the Core 1 and the XL before it, they've started to steer away from complete nuts and bolts DIY kits. They've placed an emphasis on the ready-to-go out-of-the-box experience. It's clear that the demographic of potential customers for a 3D printer is much different than it used to be. The market is no longer dominated by hardcore tinkerers or hobbyists that enjoy building and upgrading their machines. No doubt due, in part, to the complete turnkey experience offered by Bamboo. People just want something that works. It needs to come out of the box ready to print, and the first thing you print shouldn't be an upgrade. This video is brought to you by these guys, PCBWay. You've probably heard of them because they sponsor darn near every 3D printing YouTuber. Every year around the holidays, they send us a care package with some practical items like this toque. That's Canadian for winter hat and some less practical. This one is pretty cool. It's a printed circuit board and it lights up. This gives you a great idea of what PCBWay actually does. You can design something like this in Fusion 360 and send it off to PCBWay to have it manufactured. One of my goals for 2025 is to learn how to do this. So if you're in need of any custom printed circuit boards or a variety of other prototyping services, make sure to check out today's sponsor, PCBWay. All right, back to the video. Speaking of upgrades, let's discuss the advantages of the Core 1 over the Mark IVs. Most obvious are the Core XY kinematics, allowing for higher printing speeds, and a more compact footprint. The build volume on the Core 1 is 30% larger than the Mark IVs, despite using the same build plate. The Core XY kinematics allowed them to squeeze out another 10 millimeters of build depth, 220 versus 210, and they've increased the height to 270 from 220. In comparison, Bamboo's printers have a nominal build area of 256 on all axes, so Bamboo still has the edge in terms of build volume. They've also got features that the Core 1 doesn't, like a camera as stock from factory, LiDAR flow calibration, and the ability to connect multiple AMS units to print with up to 16 colors. The MMU3 has five inputs, one more than a single AMS. According to Prusa, it's the most efficient single nozzle multi-material system on the market. This is owing to the fact that they retract the filament all the way out of the melt zone, rather than cutting it off at the top of the heatsink, which requires that the remaining portion be purged out. So if you're keen on really efficient multicolor printing, there'd be a good argument to favor the Core 1. If cost is no object and fast, efficient filament changing is your top priority, the Prusa XL is the current market leader in that category. 
That is, perhaps until Bamboo releases their new printer in 2025. There's a good chance they'll disrupt that market as well. So the question remains, who is the core one for? Prusa's position in the market has really changed in recent years. With the value proposition of their printers shifting from advanced features and ease of use to upgradability and strong customer support. At one time, they led the market on all fronts. Sure, their machines were more expensive, but they had features other brands didn't, like auto bed leveling. Nowadays, the market is much more competitive. Rather than being at the forefront of innovation, they're now lagging behind. The extra you're paying for a Prusa no longer gets you a more refined experience or additional quality of life features. The primary value proposition is the longevity and the knowledge that you won't be hung out to dry by shoddy after sales support or left with a paperweight in place of a working machine. Whether or not those factors are valuable is up to you and perhaps depends on your appetite for risk. You might be paying a premium for a Prusa, but at least you know it should retain most of its value or at least remain operational. You could spend a little less on an X1Z combo and use it for thousands of hours before the first major failure, assuming you don't have your good time cut short by a show-stopping issue. Personally, I'd sooner buy two P1Ss. At that price point, I won't lose sleep when it stops working after a thousand hours. I'll simply call it a write-off and replace it. At the price point of the X1C, it stings a little more. So the Core 1 is clearly a big leap forward for Prusa. It brings them almost up to speed with the latest and greatest from the other big brands. But the latest and greatest from Bamboo, their flagship X1 Carbon, is already a few years old, and it's poised to be replaced imminently, at which point the Core 1 may appear instantly dated. So then why wouldn't Prusa take this opportunity to leapfrog Bamboo? They could have taken what they learned from the XL and packaged it up into a smaller format, fully enclosed, tool-changing 3D printer allowing them to regain the crown as the industry leader in innovation. Instead, they met Bamboo where they were at. Perhaps like Mosaic with the Palette 3, Prusa is realizing they've met their match. So rather than trying to get ahead, they're releasing the tech they've already had in the pipeline for years, and at the same time pivoting their focus to the industrial side of the industry. We saw it with Mosaic. They've abandoned the consumer market in favor of industrial machines. And Prusa has evidence of doing the same. They've already released their HT90 Delta printer and teased their SLX industrial resin system, a machine that looks startlingly similar to those from the likes of Stratasys or 3D Systems, and is clearly way outside the price range of the consumer market. I guess only time will tell what the future holds for Prusa Research. One thing I think we can all agree on is that competition is good for us as consumers. The days of Ender 3 clones are over. To compete in this market requires innovation or at least imitation. And in the case of the latter, you better be cost competitive. But I'd love to know what you think. Given the option, which would you sooner buy? The Prusa Core 1 or a Bamboo X1C combo? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.